Hey everybody and welcome back to Instinct Bassin. We are either in or nearing the post spawn in most parts of the country at the time of this video, which is one of the best times of the year to target offshore humps, islands, channels, and ledges. As bass move offshore from their spawning grounds, they'll stop on these spots to feed on shad, crawdads, and other bait fish before heading to their summer hideouts. This video is going to go in depth on how to use what I think is one of the most useful and underrated features on most of today's modern fish finders, and that's the depth shading capability. But this isn't just going to show you how to turn on the depth shading on your fish finder. We're going to take a deep dive, so stay tuned. If you've watched a few of my other videos, you know that I'm a big fan of Garmin fish finders, and that's the one I'll be using for this video. But if you bought your fish finder in the last five years or so, it should have this feature. So you'll get something out of this video if you use another brand. We're going to go over not only how to use depth shading, but also what types of structure to look for with it, how to approach that structure, and what lures and techniques to use once you're on the structure. Thanks so much for being here, and let's get started. First, let's look at what depth shading actually is. Depth shading will allow you to pick a certain depth of water and set your fish finder to show that depth in a preset color. The benefit of this is that it allows you to quickly use your map to eliminate most of the lake and hone in on a certain depth you want to fish. This is helpful when you're on a new body of water or when you're on a lake that you don't have much experience on. Before we get into how to actually use depth shading, you're going to want to start by doing map research. Google Earth can come in extremely handy when doing this, and I did a video a few weeks back showing how to use Google Earth to find offshore fishing spots and transfer them to your fish finder. I'll leave a link to that video down below as it goes through this process step by step. I like to compare the Google Earth map with a Navionics map to help further break down offshore areas that I want to fish. Once I've done this, I've now got an idea of the depth I want to set my depth shading to on my Garmin. If you're using a different fish finder, check your manual on how to turn on its depth shading. For now, I'll go through the steps on how to turn it on using the Garmin 93 SV. From the home screen, go to the fishing chart, then press menu, then layers, and then depth shading. Make sure there's a small green box next to the depth shading menu. This means it's turned on. Once we're in the depth shading section, we can then pick what colors we want certain depths to be. I don't like to go overboard here as it can make the screen messy and make it longer for the map to load. So I normally only like to shade the color of the depth I want to fish, maybe one more. In this example, let's use 15 to 20 feet. Naturally, you can adjust this depth depending on the lake you're fishing. For instance, if you're in Florida where it's much shallower, you may want to make this depth around 10 feet. I like to use 5 foot increments, but you can adjust this as well. So pick whatever color you like, and I suggest turning off all the other ones. So only that depth will be a different color. So now we've eliminated around 90% of the lake and greatly narrowed down where we want to fish. Now it's almost time to take it to the lake and put it into action. Not every hump or underwater island will be the same. It's best to pick ones that are near deep water, near channel swings, and have steep contours, which can be identified by looking for contour lines that are closer together. This narrows down the lake even further and helps us focus on spots where a lot of bass should be in the post spawn. We can further narrow down these spots by driving over them and looking for brush or rocks or shell beds that may be on or near them. Be sure to create a waypoint for these areas so you can easily get back there and have a reference to cast toward. And if you don't have technology like a spot lock trolling motor or casting rings or forward facing sonar, don't be too proud to use the old school marker buoy to give you a casting reference. If you do use a marker buoy, I don't recommend dropping it right on the spot. Instead, drive over the spot and mark it a few feet past it and to the right or to the left. Then turn the boat around and cast just behind it and to the left or to the right of the buoy. This will ensure you're on the spot and keep you from getting tangled in the line. Johnny Schultz over at Fish the Moment has an excellent video on this and I'll leave a link to it down below. Now that we can use depth shading to get to a spot, let's talk about some of the lures and techniques to use once we're on that spot. A lot of this will depend on the lake you're on, the species of fish you're fishing for, and what the bait fish are, but I typically like to take a top-down approach. So I'll usually start out with a walking topwater of some sort, like a spook, sexy dog, or a cane walker. I'll leave a link down below of all the baits I mentioned, and if you're interested, do me a favor and use that link to buy them. It'll greatly help me out and make more free content like this. On some lakes, especially some highland reservoirs, you can stick to topwater all day and just move from spot to spot, attempting to intercept actively feeding fish. Throw 10 casts or so, and then move on. Other lakes will require you to keep going down in the water column. Moving on down from the top water, I'll next pick something that works the middle of the water column. If there are shad or herring in your lake, and the water is relatively clear, it's hard to beat a small swim bait. 
Here I've got two favorites, and these are the Kitek 3.5 inch Swing Impact and the Storm Largo Shad. The Kitek has better action in my opinion, but it's also a lot less durable than the Largo Shad. So pick your poison here. In either case, make a long cast, let the bait sink a few seconds, and then slowly reel it back in and wait for him to hammer it. Come here. Yes. Look at that. A jerk bait is also hard to beat in this scenario, particularly if the water is still in the high 60s to low 70s and the water is fairly clear, and if you have forward facing sonar. My favorites are the Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus 1 and the Berkeley Stunna. Be sure to use light enough fluorocarbon line to get them down deep into the water column. So we've gone from the top of the water column to the middle, and now it's time to work the bottom. Here I like three lures depending on the temperature, location, and water clarity. The first will be a deep diving crankbait like a Strike King 5 or 6XD. Just be sure to make long casts on 10 to 12 pound line and allow the crankbait to get down deep enough. Kevin Van Dam has literally made millions doing this specific technique alone. Next it's hard to beat a football jig when working deep offshore structure for quality fish. Pick your favorite jig and trailer combination and work it slowly through any brush or rock located on the hump or island. One of my favorites is a Strike King Hack Attack Heavy Cover Jig with a Strike King Rage Carl Trailer. Keep color simple with either black and blue or green pumpkin. Finally, the last technique I'll mention is a drop shot. Drop shotting brush piles on offshore humps can be very effective, particularly in clear water and when they won't bite anything else. Be sure not to move the bait too much when drop shotting and let the soft plastic do most of the work. My go-to drop shot rig starts with a 4-6 to six inch robo worm with a size 1 to 1 aught robo worm rebarb hook. Be constantly aware of your surroundings and look for fish busting shad on the surface. Keep your top water ready to fire at them and try to hit them on the head with it. There's obviously other techniques you can use as well, but these are some of my favorites. So this is how to use depth shading to identify offshore post-spawn fishing spots and how to catch them doing it. If you're a Garmin user, be sure to check out this other in-depth on the water video showing all kinds of tips and tricks. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this content, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. As always, trust your gut, and I'll see you on the water.